Hey everybody, it's Talia Rose and go ahead and start getting excited because today I'm going to show you how to make the best pulled pork sandwich you will ever have and you're not going to find this recipe anywhere else because it's a compilation of a bunch of different recipes and stuff just from my brain um, and it's absolutely amazing and what's great is it's easy and you can totally make it in a crock pot. So what you're going to want for the pulled pork is a piece of pork butt. It doesn't sound delicious, I know, but it is at the end, trust me. I usually do about a three or four pound piece of pork butt, depending on how many people I'm gonna serve. A four pound piece of pork butt will serve a family of four and then leftovers for a big second meal as well, so that should be plenty. Make sure when you're looking for a piece of pork butt that you're gonna get a piece with a good sized bone in it, uh, whether the bone goes all the way across the piece of meat or if it's just a circle bone, um, but I've found that the best cuts of meats are always the one with the bone in them. So once you've brought your piece of pork butt home, all you're going to do is throw it in the crock pot and fill it about three-fourths up the piece of meat with root beer. And that's it. You seriously just let it simmer in the root beer. And what I like to do is I stick it on low for almost like 12 hours I do it for a long time. Now the cooking times vary depending on whether you want to cook it on low or on high. I really like cook it on low because I feel like it just brings out more of the flavor and the pork is juicier. So I'll cook it literally for about 12 hours on low in the root beer. Um, but if you're in a little bit of a time crunch, you can do it same day on high um, for about six hours or so. But the pork is literally just gonna pull apart once it's done. So I went ahead and started my piece of pork, but in the root beer last night and I cooked it on low so it's all cooked and done because I wanted to show you what it looks like. All right so here we have the beautifully cooked pulled pork and as you can see it's been cooking in its own juices so even though I only filled it three-fourths of the way up to the top with root beer it's gone almost all the way up to the top with its own juices. All right our pork has been drained and now that it's drained before we start shredding it what we're going to do is cut off all the fat and remove all the bones. Okay, so now that the bone and the fat and anything else questionable has been removed from the pork, as you can see it will easily fall apart into little pieces. This pork has been pulled. Alright, now that our pork has been pulled and all the fat and the bones have been removed, we're about to do something magical to it. What you're going to want to do is take about one cup OJ. I just like to eyeball it, but I think that's about good. Then you're going to want to take about half of a bundle of cilantro. Then you're going to take a couple chipotle peppers. You can add as many as you like, but make sure you get the sauce in there. Boop. So obviously, if you don't like it spicy, take it easy on the chipotle and the cilantro. You can add just a dash and just a pinch of the chipotle if it's not something that you enjoy. But this is really going to give it a kick. Then you're going to want to add about four tablespoons of honey. I just eyeball it, and it always depends on the amount of pulled pork that you end up cooking. But this is a ratio that I like. And again, you can eyeball it because it's not really a science, so it's just what you prefer. But now we're going to blend this up and dump it over our meat for a tangy, awesome kick that's going to make it amazing. Now it is going to be a bit spicy, oh, but it smells delicious. I'm just going to pour it over the pork that's been pulled. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this back in the crock pot for about half an hour to let the juices just kind of soak into the meat and really let it take on that flavor. So, and then I'm going to add Sweet Baby Ray's. I've tried a million different barbecue sauces, but this one definitely complements the sandwich the best. So I recommend using this one. And again, if you don't have time to cook the juice in the crock pot any longer, um, go ahead and just throw this on it and you're good to go. You can go ahead and add any amount of this that you'd like onto the pulled pork, but because this is a traditional barbecue pulled pork sandwich, you are gonna want it to have that barbecue flavor and that juice that we just put in it gives it a kick and a zing and this is really gonna sweeten it up and make it taste really good. So throw some of this on there and you'll be good to go. Now that we've finished with the pulled pork, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make the coleslaw. And this coleslaw is designed to go on top of the pulled pork sandwich, but if you don't wanna do it that way, you can just go ahead and serve it along on the side. Now for the 
coleslaw itself, we're gonna need a red onion, a head of cabbage, strawberries, I know it's weird, but just bear with me, it's all gonna make sense, and some carrots. So who knew that there was actually a really easy way to dice an onion? So I just wanted to show you that real quick. Once you've gone ahead and peeled all the wrapping off the onion, cut down toward the end in fine little rows, like so, and then turn it and cut down across making a checkerboard of the onion slices. And then flip it on its side and cut down in slices and it's just going to fall apart into nice little diced pieces. Next for my head of cabbage, I have just washed this so I'm good to go and I'm only going to want half of it. I prefer to actually have my cabbage diced um, as opposed to sliced, but feel free if you prefer it sliced, go for that. And I actually dice my cabbage the same way that I dice my onion by going across and crisscross I was kind of making a checkerboard of cuts across the cabbage and it's going to start to fall apart now. I'm just going to dump it straight into the bowl. Now that I've got my red onion, half of the head of cabbage, I'm going to go ahead and add carrots and I'm going to do two medium sized carrots and you're going to want these shredded so that you're not having to chew big pieces. All right. Next, you're going to want to add one cup sliced strawberries. And again, I know you're probably thinking, like, what strawberries? I've never thought or heard of anyone adding that to coleslaw. Well, it's actually amazing. And the sauce that we're going to make for it is going to have like a tequila lime kick to it. So this is really more of a tropical coleslaw that we're going to be putting on the pulled pork. And the sauce that's marinating the pulled pork right now with the orange juice and the chipotle peppers and the cilantro and honey absolutely complements this tropical coleslaw amazingly well. So it really is just going to be an explosion to your taste buds and it's going to be your new favorite dish. So give it a shot. Okay, so now that we have our cabbage, carrots, red onion, strawberries into our coleslaw, the base of the coleslaw and all the contents are ready. And before we move on to the sauce, I just want to show you real quick how beautiful this medley of colors looks. You've got the red and the orange and the green and it's just really beautiful and the, the purple in there. Um, so it's not only delicious, but it's really pleasing to look at. So now for the sauce that's going to blow your mind. Okay, so for the tequila and lime sauce, you're going to need tequila and limes, obviously, but you're also going to want mayonnaise and some salt. I use garlic salt because I love garlic, and any way I can sneak it in there, I do. So garlic salt or just plain regular salt and a little bit of sugar. Now, if you have a regular size lime, you only need about one lime, but unfortunately, I just have the key limes, so that's going to equate to about three or so juiced key limes. Now that my limes are juiced, I'm going to go ahead and get some zest from the lime peel and it's just going to give it some extra kick. If you have a regular size lime, which I would recommend because it is a time saver, then you only need to zest half of the lime peel. Now you're going to want to add three fourths of a cup of mayonnaise or if you prefer to do it a little healthier, you can go ahead and substitute the whole thing for your low fat yogurt or do like half mayonnaise, half yogurt, whatever you think um, would be best for you. I'm feeding this to my husband tonight and he likes the mayonnaise, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So now that the mayonnaise is in there, you're gonna wanna add a pinch of salt or well, maybe about two pinches of salt or garlic, garlic salt, whichever you prefer. And then I literally just throw in a spoonful of sugar because it helps the medicine go down. Okay, now you're going to want to add about two, two teaspoons of tequila. So just two little teaspoons. And it's going to just amp up all the other flavors in that sauce. The lime is going to kick you. The sugar is going to be like, 
even better than it was. It's just really going to amplify all of the other flavors that you have in there. So you're going to want to put the garlic on your cutting board, smash it, and then mince it real small and fine. And by the way, ladies, if you are ladies that are making this, this is the fastest way to a man's heart. A pulled pork sandwich has to be just an all-time guy favorite. And if you can do that well and make it look effortless, you're doing pretty good. So now that your garlic is minced, you're going to want to add a little coarse sea salt to it. Just a little bit. It's actually going to work to help scrape the garlic. So now you're going to put your knife down sideways with the sharp edge facing away from you. And you're just going to want to kind of go across the garlic and mush it. And what you're doing is you're mashing it and it's going to be biting against that salt that you've just put down and kind of turning itself into a paste. And so you're getting the juice out of the garlic and you're mushing it down real fine so that when you take a bite of the coleslaw, no one's going to get one big mouthful of garlic because it's going to kind of be sneaky in there, which is what you want garlic to do. You want it to be sneaky and like, oh, I taste a hint of garlic, not, oh, I just ate a big thing of garlic. Now I have everything in the sauce here. I'm just going to kind of mix it all together. It's already smelling amazing. The tequila is bringing out all the flavors of the lime and the sugar and the salt and the garlic. And mayonnaise makes everything all better. <laughs> and just dump it over. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So these guys are having a party in here now. And this party is about ready to take place in my mouth because this smells and looks amazing. And again, with all the colors that are so rich in here, it really does look very pleasing to the eye. And you can really get a great presentation wow factor out of this. This is done and absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to eat this. So good. So I feel the best way to serve a pulled pork sandwich is on a grilled thick bun because the meat is going to be so juicy, you're going to want to let it soak up into a nice good thick bun. And first, before I put the meat and the coleslaw on the sandwich, I go ahead and kind of turn these into garlic bread almost. I'll sometimes slice them in half and put a little olive oil or butter and uh, bake them in the oven for just a couple minutes till they get nice and crispy, and that really adds um, a nice twist to the sandwich too, but it's up to you how you'd like to serve it. But it's absolutely amazing. I hope you guys enjoy it and you give it a shot because this really is one of my favorite creations, <laughs> and I highly recommend it. Enjoy, and good luck with the pork sandwich.